When I was in uni, there was a woman who then became a motivational speaker. And she said there is no such thing as luck. Luck is an, um, um, what's the word? Anachrom? Yeah, whatever. For labor under correct knowledge. And I think that that stayed with me. Um, labor under correct knowledge is what? Is focus. I was newly married, um, I did a lot of entertaining, I did a lot of European food because I lived in Paris just before I came back and uh, people were, there was a lot of ava about what I did and I thought it was very ordinary. Um, but uh, for India at the time, if you remember, even five-star hotels didn't do European food really, they did this sort of strange uh, Anglo-Indian kind of continental uh, and there were a few chefs who went to France, very few, and, um, and did this sort of slightly Frenchy kind of food. So your word continental is absolutely right. It was this all-encompassing um, kind of your old-fashioned heavy European food with white sauces and um, meats cooked with sauces and uh, it had all of that had gone out with the arc in Europe you know so I felt all of that was very very old-fashioned and what I brought I think was a bit of freshness to the European food scene uh, in in Bombay it was at the time and um, yeah I, I as I said I didn't really set out with a business plan I just set out to have some fun. I think this field is dominated by men the world over. Okay, it's not just in India. And I think primarily because it's a tough field, not that women are not are tough, but it's, you know, it requires very long hours. Uh, in India especially it's difficult because you may not have supportive husbands or families who want you out 12 or 15 hours a day. So there have not been too many women chefs or women in this arena, uh, certainly not when I started, because it's tough. What I did was slightly different, so I didn't really work in a restaurant as such. Um, I created a brand and I did you know, things around that, So, but I did have a lot of support. Um, as a woman, did I have a problem? No, quite the contrary. I had really no problems as a woman. I think I had, a pro I had problems as a young person, new to the industry because I hadn't trained in this industry. But as a woman, no. In fact, um, I think on the contrary, a lot of doors were open because I was young and fresh and nice looking. I think work setbacks is easier for me to deal with. Um, we've had work setbacks. We've had dodgy partners. It hurts. Uh, it takes time to get over it. I think emotionally um, we've had fewer personal setbacks but we have had uh, work setbacks and the only thing you can do really is take time to grieve. You have to grieve about work setbacks as well not just emotional setbacks but I think you have to uh, take, take time to just understand setbacks and what's happened to you um, and then just get up and go. I think that there's absolutely no substitute. I'm very old fashioned in some ways. There is absolutely no substitute for hard work. If you happen to have, you know, um, money from above or inheritance or something, good for you. I find people who have had a huge inheritance don't work very hard. Um, and that's fine. If you're not ambitious and you don't want to work very hard and you want to take things as they come, there's no problem at all. It's completely a choice and maybe if that happened to me, um, I would be doing the same. But I find people who succeed in whatever they want to do usually get there because they've had a bit of a kick up the you know, backside to do it. Or like me, you know, it's not that I had to, but I may be intrinsically quite ambitious. When I first started, again, I started because it was a great idea, had been to Europe, seen markets, um, and it was a success from day one. We were very, very lucky. And it was also, again, brought a freshness to things. People were into their natural and organic and wanted somewhere they could buy all of that. And remember, these were the days just before 
really online took off. Online has taken off really during COVID. And, um, and so the markets were, I mean, we did the markets for seven, eight years. So hugely successful, gave someone, um, you know, uh, the chance to buy interesting things uh, and that were a little bit different from the norm um, with the health bent for sure. And then as they grew, the markets grew bigger. I think this whole movement, it's small, but it's happening, of chefs now using only local grains, only local uh, vegetables, is something we've been talking about, a seasonality. It's something I've been talking about for a long, long time. Uh, when I first started my jams, I would use local oranges, um, although the recipe said several oranges, uh, because I thought, you know, Nagpur produces great citrus fruit and great oranges. Why can't we use our local oranges for marmalade? I don't believe in, import, in using anything imported unless that dish requires it. Uh, even olive oil now we're getting from Rajasthan. So, um, as I said, I've been talking about vocal for local for, you know, 30 odd years. Well, you know, as I get older, I feel I want to do n nothing more. Um, so uh, I love, as you can see, I have a garden. So I love my garden. I love pottering around there. Um, I love my dog. And I do, you know, a lot of downtime with her because uh, it's really a pet is unconditional love and unconditional everything. Um, so I enjoy that. I do go to Italy a lot and uh, it's not because it's fancy or not. I, I have a friend's house and literally do very little except drawing. I have now started uh, pastels and drawing, I can show you some. And uh, that really makes me unwind. And I cook, so all I do there, I mean, people say, do you go there and do you go here or oh, you're going to Venice? And, um, but I do live in Venice, but, uh, but I don't necessarily go out every day. Sometimes I don't go out for four or five days. Uh, then I go and see an exhibition or something, and that's the beauty of being somewhere like Venice. But uh, yeah, I do a little bit of yoga, I, not, nothing too extreme. I do a little bit of exercise. I've started going back to the gym, which is also quite um, um, uh, strange. I never, I never liked the gym 30 years ago, but I'm quite enjoying it now because I have a trainer. She doesn't push me too much. Um, she knows my body and I know what I'm doing and it gives me a lot of energy. So, so yeah, or I just watch a movie. I watch an old movie, that's the best. I think cooking is relaxing. As long as you don't have to do it every day. I think I just did something in, um, I launched my book in Nagpur and there was a group of women and they said, you know, what we hate is that every day, it's not just the cooking because there are people to cook, but to think about what what to make. Um, there was an interesting interview with, I think, Aretha Franklin or something, and, and Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah says to her, what, are, what have been the most difficult, you know, not a past, but the difficult part of your day? And everyone was expecting her to say something about the music industry or so on. She said, what to make for dinner? So, you know, I think it's the thought about what to cook every night. If you're on your own, not so difficult. But if you've got a family uh, that's more and more demanding now because children want to eat different things. They don't want to eat sabzi roti every day, you know. Um, that whole thing of the way people used to cook has changed. And so that's an enormous pressure on uh, usually the woman of the family. So while cooking is relaxing, a lot of men say, oh, I love to cook now, because they don't have to do it every day. They have to do it when they feel like doing it. So that's a different, it's a different kettle of fish. I love writing, that's my first love. Um, I can sit down anywhere in an airport, anywhere and write, you know, it's not difficult for me. I don't have to motivate myself to sort of get in front of a computer. So that, that's always been my, my first love and it will continue. And what I love about writing is that I can do it till I drop dead. So um, it's not something that, um, that, you know, I have a job and I have to retire. A friend called Alfred for many years, who was French, um, French English, lived in Paris, and I used to live with them uh, when, I, when I was there. And um, I remember even, in, uh, he died at 93. I saw him when he was maybe 90, 91. I remember him telling me that he gets up in the morning, has his breakfast, and he would go to his studio, which was right next door. It was an adjoining door that was a new, you know, they'd moved so that it would be near his, uh, his place, you know, where he lived. And 
I remember him telling me that whether I am inspired or not, I have to go every day. If I'm inspired, I'll do some sketching. If I'm not inspired, I'll tidy up something. I'll put something somewhere else. But he said it's very important to have discipline. Whether you're a writer, a painter that is supposedly creative, uh, whether you work in a factory, whatever you do, whether you want to be a chef, I think you have to have discipline. It doesn't just come. You have to go to a place of work. You have to, you have to put in a certain amount of hours. Yeah, there are some people that are geniuses, you know. Uh, maybe they don't have to put in as much. But I think you have to put in those hours. You have to be disciplined. You have to work reasonably hard to get where you are, whether you're a chef or an author. When I was in uni, there was a woman who then became a motivational speaker. And she said there is no such thing as luck. Luck is an, um, um, what's the word? Anachrome? Yeah, whatever. For labor under correct knowledge and i think that that stayed with me um, labor under correct knowledge is what is focus so if you're very focused about what you want to do i think it happens